Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Ansible Fest 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host. Got two great guests here. Dave Linquist, Vice President of Software Engineering at Red Hat, and Matthew Jones, Chief Architect and Ansible Engineer, Architect of the Automation Platform. Matthew, great to see you. Dave, great to see you again. Thanks for coming on uh, for, the, for this CUBE conversation. Great to see you, John. Thank you. So the big theme nice here is automation. We've been talking about it for a while, Dave. I think last year we hit this point a couple times hard. Uh, this year it's kind of going mainstream and it's really exciting because like this is stuff that's been kind of going around. So it's been growing rapidly. So building on the themes from last year throughout this year and cloud native with the edge right around the corner, automation is growing rapidly. Okay, so what arenas do you guys think were in the too hard, too easy, you know, comments like, yeah, repetitive tasks are good, but it's more complicated than that now. Are there areas that your customers think are better for automation than others? Can you guys introduce where the action is? Sure, um, well, I'll get started, John. Um, we are clearly seeing an acceleration of how to apply automation across full life cycles, across domains. If you step back and think about uh, the journey many customers are on with their development environments, um, continuous delivery into cloud, hybrid cloud. The challenges are how to accelerate the use of automation across the full life cycle, across your workloads, across security, compliance, across networking, across storage, um, how to remediate situations. So it's, it's just an acceleration of how do you apply uh, automation into all these different domains. Is there areas specifically you think customers thought, no, we're never going to get there, that they're getting there now? Is there specific things you're seeing, low hanging fruit, or is there a, a clear path? Uh, what do you guys see about that? Because you know, that's, this is now, we're seeing things now that certainly with the pandemic, a lot more visibility into automation and with cloud scale. Is there areas where your customers are saying, I didn't think I can get that, now we can get it, now we can automate that. Yeah, I, I think a couple of areas jump to mind quickly. Um, one is sometimes referred to as a shift left, but how do you start bringing automation earlier, earlier into the life cycle? Uh, one of the things we talked about last year that we've been building on is with uh, advanced cluster management and containers and Kubernetes. And how do you insert automation from Ansible into all the different life cycles, whether it's uh, setting up clusters uh, it's deploying applications, it's remediating from uh, security events, uh, compliance activities. That's, that's what we're starting to see where customers are really starting to push the envelope on their use of automation across those life cycles. Matt, how is Ansible evolving to address the demands we heard in previous interviews with customers specifically um, to grow past their traditional management and automation environments? Because that's the real action here. What are you guys doing uh, to address those demands? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Our, the way that we're evolving is in, in you, you know, right? Like we, where we've started is with basic command line tools, really basic integration with systems that developers have been familiar with for years, decades, right? Where we want to grow into is the native automation that makes up the cloud, that makes up the services and infrastructure that not just developers interface with, but uh, administrators, DevOps, uh, SRE, common users, normal people who are just trying to get things done. We want to meet them at the systems and at the footprints that they expect. And, and that's what we want to do. And the, the systems and the tools that we're introducing this year, next year that we've been working on through the pandemic, it's about moving the ball forward into those areas. What, what's been uh, along those lines, what's been the, um the thought around footprint expansion, because that's become a big topic, right? I want to expand my automation space. I want to hire more people. Good luck with that. It's hard to hire people um, in this market. But again, automation is a, is a human machine and, and software perspective. So you still need humans. So footprint automation and team scale. Could you talk about that, Matthew? What, what do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know. We've spent a lot of time focusing on automation in the system space and how these tools connect to those systems. And a big theme this year of Ansible Fest has been, how do, we, how do we get back to the tools and the processes that people are using and people are building to do that? We've, we've created a whole developer 
um, focused space within the automation platform, a suite of tools that integrate into their development environments, their own automation workflows, making it easier to share and collaborate on automation, building communities within their organizations and among their, their internal stakeholders. And I think you'll see that represented here at Ansible Fest and the dedication to those tools and the integration of workflows and not just not just the tools that they've had before, but the tools that they're learning and gaining experience with right now, the container based workloads and how do we share automation and verify and validate, feel good about that automation that it's going to work when we go to production with it. Those are the kinds of tools and processes that we're developing and delivering for our customers, for the community, and for their stakeholders and their community also. What's the big updates this year at Ansible Fest for those people who want to jump in and, make, and have it be easier for teams to use Ansible and experience Ansible, and also for the, new, the newbies, people coming in who are new to automation, they could be savvy developers. I mean, people are shifting left for security and everyone's bolting on automation and or planning it in from the beginning on architecture. So you're seeing a new, a new user base come into Ansible. That's a, that's what I hear. What what yeah. specifically are you are you guys announcing? And those new people, they need to be able to come into an organization's process and get up to speed on what their automation, what automation they're working on, and learn the ropes. Be able to share and collaborate with people who are automating in the space already. We need to be able to give them access to documentation and tooling. It helps them get started right away, rather than having to fumble around the documentation, have meetings and, and learn the ropes. We want, we want to make this smooth and, and we want the pipeline of automation to go from the developer and their team into the content publish, publishing and management of automation hub, using collections and execution environments that we're introducing here the same things that they work on and build and produce as automation developers or what they'll use in the automation platform to actually run the automation. And that feels really good, right? The things that you're seeing on your developer workspace that you share with your team and your internal community, you can follow it right through your editor, your IDE, through to automation hub and approving the content, right out through automation controller and the automation platform through running that automation. Yeah, I think this is a huge point. I mean, Matthew, you nailed it. I think you have to have the, the ability to go from newbie, accelerate quickly to expert because, you know, this is the cloud, this is cloud scale, this is the life cycle of software development is changing. It's very agile, it's very integrated. Um, and newbies can come in quickly and be awesome fast. It's not, you don't need to go to the training, old school kind of training modules and get ramped up. You could be instantly running hard. So I think that's a huge point and we're hearing that. So congratulations. Dave, I want to bring you in and talk about the, um, how other Ansible adjacent systems that you oversee come together uh, uh, with this release of Ansible. So, so what does it mean for the products, okay, that are working together in the management space? Because you, know, you now have Ansible, great track record. Now you have a system uh, in, in these distributed systems now, enterprise and cloud environments are systems working together. What's the impact? Yeah, yeah. Great question, John. And maybe just to start to follow on some of the areas that Matthew was going through, <clears throat> some of the um, advances in Ansible Automation Platform are really to ease the deployment and then be able to grow that deployment with scale and distribution, um, putting uh, execution nodes wherever you, wherever those nodes need to, need to be, the ability to simplify creating content, uh, access to content, collections, uh, so that the automation maturity and the use of automation can grow. So that couples very nice with many of the investments we have in the broader space of, uh, of management around uh, advanced cluster management for Kubernetes with uh, ACM, around, around our insights, around our edge management initiatives um, across, across the board. So what I'm seeing, what we're all seeing is how many of the solutions are looking at how you bring many of these um, disciplines together. together. Uh, for example, uh, how do we start realizing the promise of event-driven architectures? From insights, how can we understand 
what's happening with workloads or infrastructure or compliance issues. And then from the management systems, we can pick up the inventory and the workload and all the specifics about that workload. And then with Ansible, we can then automate and remediate, either scale that workload, um, uh, address a, uh, you know, your, your service management processes or hook into uh, even a remediation, say of a compliance issue. So you're basically bringing together insights with policy driven mechanisms with the automation capabilities of Ansible, which is fascinating in how we start building much more robust uh, automation solutions, which are required where everything's headed in this hybrid cloud environment. I mean, what are some of the challenges that your customers have on that point? There's robust solutions or what everyone wants. Uh, it's a natural extension. I mean, you can see what you just laid out. What, what, is, what are some of the customer challenges Day that you're seeing there, because this is a path everyone's going down. I'm hearing people discuss this, you know, in the hallways and virtual hallways these days. But you know, for the most part, like, okay, I I know what I know, I know, love what I have. I got to start connecting these other adjacent systems together and make them work and automate together. What's the biggest challenge? Is it culture? <clears throat> is it blockers? Or what's the is it evolution? It, you can weigh in too if you want. This is this is a key question that everyone's asking. Yeah, it's a, it's a key question. And these challenges have been around for some time. Um, one, of the, one of the more complex things always in maturing the use of automation is the interaction with a lot of the existing processes that teams use, which are usually focused on particular domains. So many of the areas that we've been talking about um, automating the, 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 full, the fuller life cycle is you're actually cutting across the domains and intersecting and integrating with many of, many of the processes. So how do you allow a customer to incrementally evolve the automation of these processes across the domains, which brings in identity and access and authorization. It brings in visibility into the resources and the applications and the dependencies. And then of course the wealth of automation um, the collections and the playbooks, essentially the content, how do you bring the content together? So the challenges are, how do you allow the collaboration across the processes? How do you accelerate access to the content? And then how do you have a level of control to your identity and access and authentication systems? That's awesome. Matthew, what's your reaction on this? Because I mean, you architected the system and you, you have to envision it working <laughs> in the future. There's a lot of headroom involved in this area, a lot of automation. What's the blockers and what's the customer challenges right now that you see that can be easily turned into opportunities? Yeah, you know, the culture of automation is so different between, between, the, different, uh, between the different parts of the community, right? Developers expect something completely different than DevOps and network administrators, systems administrators, they, they just have different expectations on how automation should work. I've been, been writing software for a long time and the, the, the tension and conflicts between the teams can, they can be extreme sometimes, right? We want to build and design automation capability that works in the domains that each of those people work in so that they can meet in the middle with a common set of tools. You know, Dave mentioned, identity and event-based automation. We all know that there are common things that, that are needed, but we also know that there are different ways to kind of achieve that depending on the space that you're in. And so a lot of, a lot of that has to do with these teams being able to meet in the middle, collaborate on the automation, use content in the way that they expect, and then still provide that governance and reassurance that it's going to work and do the things that they want to do. Everything that we're doing here is about enabling that and supporting that. That's a great point. And I would say that now more than ever, this cultural, I won't say collision, there's always been tension. I mean, as long as I can remember, going back to my career in the eighties, when I started coding back in the day in the systems revolution, it was always tension between these groups because they had their own different worlds and they, and they had to lock them in lockdown. But now with automation, it's almost like a peace treaty evolving where you, the speed game on cloud development becomes the unifying factor, right? If you can enable systems that can go faster, because what, what pisses people off when someone's slower than they are? Where's that update? You know? <laughs> or, you know, the, but now we had harmony. This is cult, this is real. It's not touchy feely, Matthew. This is kind of what's going on right now. And, and David, love your reaction because this is like state of the art issue. 
This is this is state of the art, particularly when we push the envelope on event-driven automation, which leads right into AI ops and uh, edge management and fleet fleet management, uh, being able to do this automation at scale, at tremendous scale, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of endpoints. But what's also what we also have to keep in mind is behind all this is how do you control the environment? How do you really lock down the security? How do you lock down the full supply chain in this automation from the content creation to the execution, to what's being authorized, to the policies? So these are all the pieces that we're investing in to start pulling together so that we can really push the envelope of where automation is taking businesses and their ability to react to change and opportunities and challenges, but also in a controlled manner. Give me infrastructure as code, give me network security and transit, all that good stuff that goes on the network layer and let me push code <laughs> when I want and automate the stuff that pisses people off and we all get along, right, Matthew? That's the, that's the future? <laughs> that's right. It, none of it's optional anymore, right? The, there's, a, there's a lot of people out there. Um, you know, we see that with vulnerabilities and, and security issues that have cropped up over the, over the last year. It's, it's got to be one of the most important things that every organization is thinking about. Yeah, I think this, this whole unification benefit is, is one of the most beautiful things that comes out of the technical benefits, uh, the speed and the, and the advantages of, of the time to value with, with the enablement there. So I think that this is a really cutting edge issue and, and thanks for bringing that up and, and discussing it. We're going to continue to talk more about it because we're seeing it very positive outcomes come from this with when you have a lot of these operational things automating away uh, and then enabling more faster development for modernization. So thanks for, thanks for sharing that. So I just want to close out Matthew with you on saying um, congratulations. I know you've been involved, a lot of history with Ansible, um, but I got to ask you, what are you looking forward to most with this release? Oh, that's, that's such a good question because the engineering team working, uh, working on some of the core features that we're bringing this time around we, we have something that we've been working on for years now, and it's all coming together with this release. We're really excited about it. And we've talked a little bit before about collections and execution environments. You know, that, that goes back to Ansible Fest last year. It's like, what are we, what are we bringing this year? What, what are we giving you a window into, into, into our minds? And you know, we talked about developer tools, but one of the things we've, we've spent the most time on is how can we give you that window into your automation worldwide planet planet scale data centers clouds it doesn't matter you you should be able to run automation anywhere that you need automation to run the ansible automation platforms automation mesh lands in this release and it's the thing i'm most excited about because it gets that automation out to where you need it to run if you're defining and governing your automation on the east coast of the US and deploying it on the west coast in Asia and Europe, now you can do that and, and feel really good that it's going to work, it's survivable, it's reliable, and it's fast. And the automation mesh brings, brings that to the production side of Ansible automation. And it works with the collections and the execution environments and the developer tools that we built around that to make sort of one seamless system for worldwide automation. And we'll spend the next year building on top of these technologies that we've mentioned. The Dave's mentioned event-based automation, compliance, governance. Now we have the foundation that we can build on to really, really sort of take it into the future next. Do you feel there's a lot of headroom there for innovation? Tons of headroom. Right, it's, right. it's something we're really excited about. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's like, when's the air conditioning going to come out? Like all, all these new features coming out. You got to have a great stuff there. Congratulations, Dave, we'll end it with you. I want to get your thoughts uh, as Ansible Fest continues to have success uh, with the community. The larger cross domain point you brought up was key. We'll be at KubeCon, open source is continuing to be a tailwind for developers and AI ops. Now you got the edge exploding with value, new architectures, distributed computing. You know, Red Hat's in the middle of it at many levels. What's your take on this revolution in software engineering as open source continues to drive as, and, and this new agile and automation kicks in? What's the impact? How do you see that this impacting the, the software careers and outcomes of producing software? Well, the impact of open communities, the ecosystems is incredible. It has been for years and it just continues to accelerate. Um, 
what I look forward to, John, uh, with FEST and through this year and next year is how, is how we help bring together the, the wealth and capabilities of automation to enterprises, to scale it to the enterprise across all the areas that they're driving towards. And, and, you, and you rattled off quite a few of them, including edge and, and security. And how we bring the open communities, the open ecosystems, the content creation together with to deliver this value with customers. Uh, the growth has been incredible in the space. I don't see it slowing down. I just see it accelerating as the demands on businesses to really accelerate their delivery of new capabilities into market in new regions with edge in a secure in a secure manner. So being able to pull the open communities together and scaling this across enterprises, yeah. that, that's that's the impact we're having and it's it, great. It's really like, it's really almost a pinch me moment where you go, hey, you know, a lot of the stuff we used to worry about is actually being solved. People are getting along. Scale is the new competitive advantage, modern applications driving business value. This is kind of like Nirvana coming around the corner. It's happening. I mean, Matthew, this is like what we, 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 would, we talked about decades ago, like technology will evolve to a point where it's faster and contributing more to humans. Yes, exactly, exactly. Great stuff. Okay, Matthew, Dave, thank you so much for coming on, Dave. Thank you for sharing. Congratulations, great event. Um, stay, stay right there for more continued coverage of Ansible Fest 2021. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.